Bills Focus brought to you by Ficta Endel and Elmer Eye Care, the preferred LASIK doctors for the Buffalo Bills. What are you waiting for? Welcome to another installment of the Top 10 Performances of 2011. I'm Chris Brown and I'm joined by Bills outside linebackers coach Bob Sanders to go over Chris Kelsey's Week 16 performance against the Denver Broncos. And Coach, I know Chris Kelsey is one of the more consistent players on the defensive side of the ball, but I mean, this was a coming out party in the biggest way for him in week 16, a mammoth performance from him. It really was. He did a nice job getting, you know, prepared to get ready to go. And, uh, you know, he was asked to do a lot of different, uh, uh, you know, I mean, he was in a lot of different situations right. and he just did an excellent job in those, you know, uh, in that game. He actually, at the end of the season, really started playing like, uh, you know, he had a slow start to the year and then got hurt. But right, then, the calf, yeah. uh, you know, but, you know, but even at the end of the year, but especially in this week, he did an outstanding job. Well, let's take a look at some of his better plays in this one. A big win for the Bills in week 16. Okay, coach, so our first play from Chris here comes in a first and 10 situation, and he gets a, a tackle for loss on this one. Right, we were in a base defense here, and um, as you can see, uh, Denver tried to, you know, to cause some confusion, you know, by just a little bit of shift. We had to reload our defense, and Chris is playing as an outside linebacker here. And, uh, you know, his responsibility as, uh, you know, any blocker comes as a hit, uh, you know, the blocker as best he can and fit on the inside of the block. So his gap is actually on that inside. But as you can see, uh, you know, as he hits good leverage right there, good hands, uh, uh, you know, he moves his feet on contact, knocks the guy back, is able to come off the block because he has control of the blocker. Really good play right there, good solid tackle. Uh, you know, and again, a lot of guys trying to get around the ball right there. Next play here, a second and 17 situation, and he gets back into the backfield there on a, on a failed screen play, it looks like. Yeah, you know, actually, uh, you know, Arthur Most did a nice job of recognizing the play and ended up getting his hands up in the throw lane about the time uh, Tebow wanted to throw. But uh, Chris, uh, you know, you never know if it's a screen or, you know, it's a pass. He's just making his normal rush right here. And the object, you know, that we had going in this game is, is to try to keep this guy in the pocket and not and not be held. And he did a great job of getting on the edge, getting around the top side, and, you know, with the help of Arthur on the front side, uh, um, as well as Nick Barnett and, you know, and Dwan Edwards, those guys had recognized that, you know, the screen was going to be there, as you can see, you know, on the edge and then just finishing the play, uh, not relaxing on any kind of play fake or anything right there. Maybe just talk about his technique on this rush. He's using his inside hand to keep the tackle hands off of him. I mean, is that, maybe just walk us through what he's doing there. Well, actually, uh, you know, it's a you know, simulation of a little bit of a bull right here. You know, we tried to make sure that they couldn't get their hands on us. So, uh, you know, as we work through the week, you know, we, uh, you know, uh, one of our techniques that we use is one arm is actually longer than two arms. So as he reaches, you can see he kind of extends his body right there. And, uh, you know, the, the offensive line is not able, you know, even though he may be even a little longer in length than Chris is, he's not able to grab him. So Chris is able to, you know, to stay moving, stay active and be a moving target, uh, uh, you know, in that play right there. Next play is a second and nine from the 21. And here he... He's matched up with a tight end, and he wins this thing. Again, he's aligned now, not as an outside linebacker, but more as a defensive end. He's playing head up the tight end. Uh, you know, in this game, you know, felt like it was a favorable matchup for us. Uh, his gap is actually, you know, to his right. As you can see, he holds his gap right there. And then, uh, you know, because he has control of the blocker with his hands, good leverage, he's able to disengage and come out and make a tackle, uh, you know, helping out in another gap. But as you can see on the tight, his his gap is actually that inside gap right there. So he takes that gap away, uh, and then is able to disengage and come off and, and 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 help make a nice play. And I mean, usually he's just responsible for that gap, let the guy outside make the tackle, but he goes out there and helps him clean it up. I mean, that's right. that's, that's not easy to do. And that's what good defenses do. You know, you don't stay in one spot. You know, you try to control the blocker, hold your gap, and then and then disengage and try to go make a play. And he does the same thing here on this third and one play with the tight end again. Uh, you know, again, he's on a wing set here playing as an outside linebacker. Again, he, you know, he switched from a defensive end back to an outside backer. His uh, gap is the inside gap. Again, as you can see, this time the back thinks he's going to you know, shed and go outside, but he's very patient. He's controlling the blocker. He sees the, the running back commit to the inside. Then he makes a very, very good chest-to-chest -chest tackle right here which is able to knock him back and, and, and then with the help of, uh, you know, of all the pursuit right there, knock it back, it was a big 
third down stop. Yeah, I mean, it was third, third one, one there, and yeah, he holds, I mean, he stones him right at the line of scrimmage. And you can almost see from the end zone view how he's peeking around the, the, the blocker there to see which side to take. Because right, right there, he just, <laughs> and he just tosses him. I right. mean, it's not even a, an issue there. Right, and you know, and that's why he's able to make a good solid tackle because he, you know, completely disengages uh, off of that, uh, you know, off of that end right there. But again, you can see, uh, you know, all the guys from the inside, uh, uh, you know, are trying to get to the ball as hard and fast as they can. Guys on the backside, Spence. You can see Spencer Johnson with the backside. Dwan, all those guys, uh, uh, Marcel, uh, you know, everybody pitching in and knocking on by. All right, last play, first and 10 from the 25, and a lot of Bills fans are going to remember this one for a while. Another outstanding rush by Chris. Uh, you know, again, a good job. You know, we tried to keep uh, uh, him inside as best we could, and, and uh, he does a great job not getting held here. Um, as you can see, uses, you know, the same technique, our long arm bull. Uh, you know, one of the you know the situations we try to do is you know is try to strip uh, the quarterbacks as they uh, you know as we attempt to get a sack, and, and he does a really a nice job. You can see it on the title a little bit better, uh, you know, as he rushes right here. But uh, you know, again, good pocket presence for everybody. Spence realizes he, he's getting hung inside, so he spins back out, which slows him down just a little bit, which allows Chris. He doesn't feel Chris on the top side. Then as you can see, Chris, he's probably not going to make a good solid tackle, but he launches his body right there and tries to get his arm on the back side and is able to get it uh, before he comes uh, forward to get the sack. Ball pops up. Spence has greater, you know, just great awareness right there, as does Alex. If, if Spence doesn't get it, you know, Alex is going to get it. And then, you know, Alex does a great job of just blocking the closest guys, gives Spence a you know, the opportunity to get into the end zone force. Okay, coach, so when all is said and done, a 10 tackle, three sack performance, including the force fumble we saw there at the end. We knew it was his best performance, but Chris is pretty dependable week in and week out. You know, just a true veteran professional, right? He really is. Uh, his leadership, the way he prepares, uh, you can see, um, you, know, uh, you know, in those five plays, he was asked to do a lot of different things from an outside linebacker position, uh, you, know, a, you know, actually a defensive end position, uh, he performs at a high level. He's able to take what you try to get him to do out to the field. Uh, his work uh, ethic in the week, his leadership in the, you know, the classroom, you know, they're all great. So certainly his best performance. And, and at the end of the year, like I say, he came on strong and, and hopefully he'll pick up from there. Well, Coach, listen, thanks very much for the time. I know right, the fans appreciate me. your insight and breaking down some of the better plays that Chris turned in this year. And stay tuned to buffalobills.com for more of the top 10 performances from 2011.